tell you about um, some things we do at the Open University. Um, it's a Mars rover mission simulation. And the whole point of it is to develop team working skills for students who are studying uh, space science and space technology. Um, I'm Mark Jones, um, but most of what I'm talking about today is actually being developed by one of my colleagues, Susanna Schwenzer, who's in the module team that I, I ran. So a lot of what I'm saying uh, is work that's come from her design. There have been other people involved as well, uh, staff involved in the uh, Open University's uh, Open STEM labs, which are a set of um, remote experiment laboratories. Uh, and then there are other academic research staff listed here who have also contributed to the project I'm about to describe. So let me give you some context about um, why we run this activity. Um, we have a 60 credit module on um, space science, which is part of MSc in space science and technology. And one of the interesting things about S818, this module, which is the, uh, the space science module, uh, which is what I share, it's, it has a kind of case study approach, which um, has an introductory block about this kind of basics that you need to know about space missions before you can do anything really. But after that, very quickly goes into looking at four kind of iconic missions as a way of t uh, developing students' understanding about uh, the way those missions are run uh, and the kind of uh, important parameters about how they're designed, how the data is. Uh, handled and the kind of science results we get, get out of those. So in fact the, the four missions we, we chose were Apollo 11, which is very nice this year to do that, but actually it's a good gateway into modern uh, 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 lunar science. Uh, Gaia, uh, Rosetta and Mars Science Laboratory and the Curiosity Rover. Um, and each one of those case studies uses some remote experimental facilities. So we've got um, optical microscopes, we've got particle detectors, uh, we've got electron microscopes, and, modern, uh, and robotic telescopes. Um, and the thing I'm going to talk to you about today is a, a Mars rover mission, mission simulation, which is uh, run in a real physical facility at the Open University. Now, before I get into describing that, I should tell you a little bit about uh, the Open University. As you probably know, uh, most of our students are not your conventional cohort of uh, undergraduate or postgraduate students. They tend to be um, uh, people who are older, they tend to be working, at working. Um, they study part-time, and they're at a distance. There's no face-to-face -face contact with any of our teaching staff in the module that I'm describing. So what were we aiming to do in having a, a, a mission simulation? Well, what we the kind of headline learning outcome is that we want students to have practical skills that allow them to plan and carry out a scientific investigation using data from space-based instrumentation. And what we really, really wanted to develop was something that would allow them to develop and for us to assess their skills of working together online in a scenario that emulates the way that real space mission operations actually work. And so as I say, Susanna Schwenzer was the academic who designed this activity. She's on science team for MSL, so she has a lot of experience about how this works on a day-to-day -day basis. And what we've put into this simulation is to try to make it uh, realistic in terms of the time timelines and deadlines. Um, we give the students specialist roles. We expect them to come to group decisions based on the evidence in front of them and we expect them to go on online meetings and have discussions in, in real time. And just on the left end, that's a real uh, map cam picture from, from Mars taken quite recently, so that's the kind of thing we're aiming at, is to get students, what's it like to get data like that, and work together to run a, a field work um, experience on Mars. So what have we got? Well, we've got our rover, and we give the students this scenario. So we tell them that this scouting rover road has been landed on Mars, and the scenario is that it's a precursor to a, a larger mission that will follow on, and uh, that larger mission will be looking for evidence of past or present life. So there's a set of mission goals that we, we give them. Uh, I won't go through them all in great detail, but you know, some of the important things is they've got to be documenting what they find in this uh, landscape, look for water bearing, evidence of water bearing minerals and document that evidence. 
uh, look at different types of rocks, uh, look for water, produce reports of what they're doing as they go along, um, and to leave the rover in a drivable con condition. And that's a really important thing, because this is a real uh, um, physical yard with a real robotic rover in it, um, and there are real hazards. You can get the rover stuck or, or damage it if you drive it in a, in a way that isn't properly planned. So the environment that we have is a dedicated Mars yard that we built at the AP University. Um, I can show you a video over lunch that actually shows you the shed. If you want to see a video of the outside of the shed, but it also shows the inside as well. And it's been built to uh, emulate a real Martian environment. So there are the sand and rocks in there, with the rocks are analogues of the kind of rocks that you would find on Mars. And one of the things that we do for, uh, for, for running this with students is that we've got a blue screen around the inside of the yard so that we can then back project uh, a real Martian panorama onto the background. And that sounds like a lot of work, but actually it gives the students a real feeling that that's, that rover is in a real uh, Martian environment. So what they get to start with eh, is actually this uh, image that I've shown, shown on, the, on the right there, which is kind of simulated orbital image, showing the, the boulder distribution in the field where the, the rover has landed. And that's their kind of starting point. The rover is there in that picture, and they have to work out where they're going to drive and all of the scaling from that picture to start with. The actual rover itself is, a, is just a six-wheel, very small uh, uh, rover that was built using off-the-shelf com components. And we've got some uh, instruments on it. So the real instruments we've got on it are cameras. So there's a mass camera you can see sticking out at the top, a uh, navigation camera, and a camera on an arm. And what we did was to, um, uh, is to, to have simulated science instruments. So when, when the rover is investigating a rock in, in, in the yard, the rock is a earth rock, but we use data obtained from uh, MSL archival data to link that rock to a, a real Martian rock. So essentially we have two uh, science instruments that the students uh, are running in this mission. Uh, we have one called LIBS, which is a, a, a laser um, spectrometer, so it's as similar to the CAM CAM on IMSL, and it does kind of spot chemical composition uh, on quite small areas of the rock. And then the, the other instrument that's simulated but again, with real data is the APXS, the Alpha Proton X ray spectrometer, and that gives a bulk chemical composition of a, of a rock. And what's really crucial about the way this whole um, system is redesigned is that there's a, a realistic software model behind the, the rover itself. So the energy budget and the data budget of the rover are, are all built into a model uh, that the students uh, interact with. So let me just show you this video of what the Rover interface looks like in to, uh, to students. What I'm actually going to show you, whoops, hang on, let's just start that again. The students see an interface like this, which essentially gives them a timeline uh, where there are different aspects of the Rover that can be uh, uh, worked on. So the thing we saw there was, was, was the Libs, and this is setting up the Libs instrument. So it takes one of the images taken the previous uh, uh, song, pre operating day of the, the mission. Uh, the LIBS team set up work, the rock they're interested in. Um, they then um, decide where they're going to take a, a rash of uh, laser spots and they plan this all into the, uh, the, uh, the timeline. And every action on this timeline is, uh, has an energy uh, budget associated with it. And uh, essentially, as they plan what they're going to do on a sort of daily basis, they have to make sure that the energy budget is, is met uh, and that the data budget, data constraints can be uh, can get back the data that they've requested on a day-by-day -day basis. So that's the, the interface to the um, to the rover. How do we actually work with the students in that? So we take about 16 students work on a week-long mission simulation. Remember, our students are, are part-time. They, they usually have other commitments. We told them well in advance they've got to give up a week to doing this. 
And even so, we run most of the sessions uh, so that they can do things uh, out of normal sort of working hours. So uh, another thing is that we actually have students from, from other time zones as well. And so uh, we also try to, to, to uh, design things so that they can participate properly as well. They have a choice in which we, they, they work in. We're in it over three different weeks. Um, and we have six different areas in, in the mission. So the, the areas are mission lead, mission scientist, road driver, the mass camp team, the libs team, and the APXS team. And what we do is to put those 16 students into sub-teams so that to make sure that there's somebody available from each team on every available day of the simulated mission. How do we get the students to, to, to communicate with each other? Well, as I said to you before, they, they never meet, meet each other. Um, so we have various tools to get them to communicate with each other. Um, perhaps the lowest tech thing is the forum, which is an asynchronous text and, and file share. That uh, allows people to discuss things sort of offline when, at the times that suit them. But we also use uh, Adobe Connect, which allows synchronous audio um, and whiteboard sharing and screen sharing. And we use that for the, the team meetings that we hold every day of the week that the, the mission's running. We also have to use a wiki because we need some way to store documents and record results that people are, are working. And the other piece of software, one that I've just shown you, is the, is the mission interface, that tool that I just showed you with the timeline and the budget and the, and, and, and the uh, images from one of the cameras uh, displayed on it. And the important thing to say is that every sub-team has got their own version of that interface. So if you're interest if your role is to drive the rover all you see are the tools associated with driving you don't see all the, all the science instruments you don't see the other, cam uh, the other cameras for instance and so that means the teams have to talk to each other and share the relevant information with each other and decide what's relevant to share in the limited time that they've got so let me tell you about the, the timeline that they have um we often one uh concession we made to the uh, Earth life is that we, uh, we, we mapped a, a Martian soil onto 24 hours because we didn't want the complication of, of, of the slight difference in the, in the Martian day. Um, but apart from that, um, we run it pretty much as a, a real Mars rover activity, Mars uh, exploration would be run. So we have five full days of rover activity. Students start on a Saturday lunchtime with a briefing session. and. They can then go about a day to get sort of familiar with how everything works, and then they have a, their first proper planning meeting on the Sunday evening. And by uh, uh, Sunday evening, they upload their plan, um, and that's then executed to be returned by about noon the following day. And that then repeats every day uh, from until Thursday, and the final data data down is on Friday. They have a debriefing on the Friday evening to see how far, how well they've done. They know everything that uh, they've been tasked to do. The teaching support is the academic lead is very heavily involved in the early stages, and the aim is to kind of step back as the team becomes more confident, um, and that academic lead would then feed back on the mission outcome. I won't tell you exactly how the OU organises its teaching, but we also have other people called tutors who look after groups of students, and they are there in a support role as well, and they feed back on how the group performed. So just to give you an idea of what they do on a daily basis, uh, noon, uh, UK local time, that's when we have the, the downlink from, from the simulation. The afternoon, students are then uh, analysing and sharing that data and discussing what it means within their little sub-teams. By uh, 18.30, they, they're expected to uh, share the, the instrument data and the drive data so they know where they are, what science results they've, they've picked up. Uh, nine o'clock is a meeting to discuss what they've seen in the previous day's data, try and tie that together, and then at half past uh, seven, they plan for the next day, and then they've got about uh, two and a half hours of uh, very intensive work to uh, to plan what they're going to do for the next day. And the other deadline is uh, ten o'clock at night. If they go a few minutes over, we don't punch them, but we tell them really it should be in by now. Um, but there, there is actually a firm cut off a little bit later on. They usually don't get things submitted by that time. They then have a little bit of planning for what's going to happen the day after that. They finish about quarter past ten, something like that, every evening. Now, 
about where the hell we assess a text like, like this. And what we decided to do, um, since what we were really trying to do was to get students to contribute usefully to this team task, where they're communicating quite complicated information, a time-limited environment with people they've never met, we thought the best thing to do is actually to get them to reflect on what it is they've done. And we designed um, uh, an assessment that looks like this. It basically gets them to describe what their role in the mission was. Um, we get them to reflect on their performance. They bring out three positive things they've done and two things that didn't go so well. And then we get them to talk about one of the things that went well and say, how does it go? How could you make it better? Okay. What we avoid doing is saying you know, what the success of the mission was or any kind of peer judgment because we just think that would be kind of to toxic in this environment, really. So what I'll leave you with, we are actually trying to evaluate this now in quite a, a big project uh, about online teamwork. And we've done some interviews. We've got so one of the things at the Open University, we don't meet our students very often, so we have to go and interview them. Uh, we've got we have six students who are willing to be interviewed in depth about, about this from last year. And we've got some interesting quotes. We're, we're analysing this in more detail now, but the kind of, sort of headline things that we, we, we've got are, are on here. I won't read them all out, but I think there's a couple of things that are really nice here. The first thing is you know, team formation. I think we did get it all wrong the first night, but, but it was that pressurised environment where we could tell that everyone was working hard to come up with a solution. So that probably binded us together as a team quite fast, I think. Uh, the other one I like here is the assessment task. The student says it was a very sneaky question. It seemed like it was fairly easy and straightforward, but in reality, to be able to answer it, to get the points, you would have to demonstrate that you'd been a part of the team, that you're learning and problem solving and everything else. So um, that was that's what we do. The final quote is one like right down the bottom right there. Oh yes, I kept saying to the wife, I find it difficult to believe that the rover wasn't actually on Mars. So that was a uh, you know real the uh, and that's a lot of students say that they get so engrossed in it, they you know they, they really feel that they're actually involved in a in a mission. So I'll draw that to a close then. If you've got any more questions about it, we can discuss it this afternoon. Thank you.